For Session Daily Updates, I'm Sarah Allen. The House Floor Session is anticipated to begin soon. Let's take a look at what's expected to be addressed before we join members gathering for session. The House will come to order. <laughs> Prayer by the chaplain. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your infinite wisdom, you created the world in all its beauty, vastness, and diversity. In your own image and likeness, you fashioned human beings and called us to be stewards of this world, reflecting your love and care for your creation. Though we are a diverse people, your love binds us all together as one. We ask your blessing on this body. As the Star of the North guided and led explorers over the ages, so let your wisdom guide their deliberations. In the midst of their diversity of opinions and viewpoints, let your light shine upon them so that their decisions truly enhance the dignity of all the citizens of our state. May your wisdom be their guide and strength this day. We ask this in your name. Amen. Members, the, past, the chaplain for today is the Reverend Father Tim Baltus from the Church of St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church in Sartell, Minnesota. The Pledge of Allegiance. Members, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will take the roll.
now with sets. Three, three, three of these things. Three sets. Yeah. We don't need three sets. You guys can care one. A quorum is present. <clears throat> the clerk will read the journal from the preceding day. Journal. Journal of the House, 89th session, 90th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Thursday, April 28, 2016. If there are no objections, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with, and the journal will be approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Hearing no objections, the journal is approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Comparison reports. There are copies of this order of business at each member's desk. If there are no objections, the motions will prevail. Hearing no objections, the motions prevail and substitutions will be made. <clears throat> Reports of standing committees and divisions. 
There's a copy of this order of business at, placed at each member's desk. If there is no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing none, the reports are adopted. <coughs> Second reading of House Files. <coughs> Second reading, House File number 3211. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 3469. Second reading. Second reading, House File 3829. Second reading. Second reading of Senate Files. Second reading, Senate File number 2315. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 2414. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 2733. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 2793. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 2857. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 2986. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 3162. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 3262. Second reading. Second reading, Senate File 2760. Second reading. The member from Blue Earth, Representative Cornish, for what purpose do you rise? A point of personal privilege. Point of personal privilege, Mr. Uh, Speaker. One moment, Representative Cornish, as we bring members back. Representative Cornish, state your per point of personal privilege. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, uh, I don't know if you noticed the uh, pie in the back, uh, but uh, today or tomorrow is my birthday, and I wanted to celebrate today because I didn't know if we had session tomorrow, so everybody can go back and help yourself to the pie. It comes from the Rapidan Dam from the dam store, and it's actually called the dam pie. So go ahead and have yourself some dam pie. Thank you very much. Introduction of and first reading of House Files, 3980 through 3983. Introduction of first reading of House Files, 3980 through 3983. First reading of House Files, 3080, excuse me, 3980 through 3983. Messages from the Senate. <clears throat> Message from the Senate, Mr. Speaker, I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following House File. Herewith returned as amended by the Senate, in which amendments the concurrence of the House was respectfully requested. House File Number 2956, an act relating to local government. The message is signed by Joanne M. Zoff, Secretary of the Senate. Kosnick moves that the House concur in the Senate amendments to House File Number 2956 and that the bill be repassed as amended by the Senate. I recognize the member from Dakota, Representative Ko Kosnick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I do move Senate to concur. Uh, House File 90. Uh, Representative 20. Kosnick, members, please. Again, I call on the member from Dakota, Representative Kosnick, to explain the Senate amendment. Representative Kosnick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. House File 2956. Uh, I, I do move to concur with the Senate language. House File 2956 with House File 2820 that we previously uh, both voted on through the, through the House, and we're simply uh, adding an additional representative on the Dakota County CDA board uh, to conform with federal requirements and establishing uh, the Washington County Community Development Agency with the powers of their HRA and their EDA. So I move to concur. Any discussion on the Senate amendment? The member from Dakota, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and this looks okay. Further discussion on the Senate amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Once again, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. There being no further discussion, and all those in favor of the motion, the clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File number 2956, as amended by the Senate. Any further discussion on Senate File 2956? Seeing none and hearing none, the clerk will take the roll.
Representative Pinto, Pinto votes aye. The member from Washington, Representative Ward votes aye. The member from Dakota, Representative Atkins votes aye. Members, please vote. Fenton votes aye. Lomer votes aye. The clerk will close the roll. There being 126 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Calendar Message the from the Senate, Mr. Speaker, I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following Senate files herewith transmitted. Senate files number 1372, 2626, 2744, and 2896, and the message is signed, Joanne M. Zoff, Secretary of the Senate. First reading of Senate files. First reading Senate file number 1372, an act relating to state government. Hoppy moved that Senate file number 1372 and House file number 1520, now on the general register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for a comparison. If there are no objections, so ordered. First reading, Senate file number 2626, an act relating to state government. The bill is being referred to the Committee on Government Operations and Elections Policy. First reading, Senate file 2744, an act relating to education. Erickson moves that Senate file number 2744 and House file number 3204, now on the general register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for a comparison. If there are no objections, so ordered. First reading, Senate file number 2896, an act relating to human services. Creshaw moved that Senate file number 2896 and House file number 3305, now on the general register, be referred to the Chief Clerk for a comparison. If there are no objections, so ordered. Calendar of the day. The first bill on the calendar for today. is House File 2341. Excuse me, I got you, Senator. 2445, excuse me, members, 2445. House File number 2445, an act relating to health, number one on the calendar for the day, the first engrossment. A call on the bill author from Scott, Representative Albright, to your bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And members, uh, House File 2445 is a bill that would add a seat to the uh, Board of Medical Practice, allowing for an osteopath uh, to be involved in that. Uh, the practice updates terminology throughout the Medical Practice Act as uh, to accurately repre repre represent, excuse me, and represent and refer reference osteopathic physicians and osteopathic medicine. It also aligns the number of attempts allowed to pass the Comprehensive Osteopathic Medical Licensing Examination, otherwise known as Complex USA, with the number of attempts allowed to pass uh, the exam as well. It also repeals some references to obsolete licensing and examination requirements for osteopathic physicians that's been in effect since May of 1963. Members, this uh, uh, found unanimous uh, approval in both committees and I would uh, encourage a green vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File Number 2445. Discussion to House File 2445. Discussion to House File 2445. Seeing none and hearing none, the clerk will take the roll.
Atkins votes aye. The clerk will close the roll. There being 127 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for today is House File 2803. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 2803, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to civil commitment, the first engrossment. I call on the bill's author, the <coughs> member from Sherburn, Representative Zerwas. Mr. Speaker, members, House file 2803 deals with 72-hour uh, holds and look notification uh, for law enforcement. Currently, in state statute, as someone is released from a 72-hour hold, that facility is required to contact law enforcement upon their release. However, if they are not uh, admitted into the hospital or end up leaving prior to the admission process, or if they leave uh, against doctor's advice, basically run away from the facility prior to the 72 hours, there was concern about whether or not notification during the 72 hour or prior to it starting would violate HIPAA this clarifies that it, in fact, does not. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House File number 2803. Members, discussion to House File 2803. Any discussion to House File 2803? Seeing none and hearing none, the clerk will take the roll. Members, please vote. The clerk will close the roll. There being 127 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the agenda today on the calendar is House File 3308. The clerk will report. <clears throat> House File number 3308, number three on the calendar for the day, an act relating to civil law, the second engrossment. I call on the member from Carver, the bill author, Representative Pugh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, members, regardless of the outcome, there are all too frequently no real winners in family court. The process of litigation and hearings takes a toll on families and doesn't reflect best practices for most people in settling divorce. In the interest of well-being of families, my bill seeks to improve upon this process. Increased usage of Alternative Dispute Resolution, or ADR, could result in more favorable outcomes, especially for families with children versus the traditional court process. And after all, after the divorce is final, the parties will be, have to get together and work effectively in order to communicate and co-parent their children. Alternative dispute resolution refers to any means of settling or resolving disputes outside of the courtroom and any method of resolving disputes other than by litigation. Members, by Court Rule 310, Domestic abuse cases within the court are exempt from ADR. 
The purpose of this bill is to simply educate people about and inform them that they have an option, that option being to use mediation. This is important because there are a growing number of pro se litigants, individuals who are representing themselves in the court, many of whom can't afford an attorney and aren't aware of whatever options might be available to them. In fact, on a recent visit to Hennepin County, one of the two counties I represent, I was there for the specialty courts. I spoke with the staff attorney at the help center, it's the self-help center, who informed me that their office in one year attended to 20,000 requests of individuals who are looking for free um, service. My bill requires, number one, that the judge is going to provide an informational form which will be created by the state court administrator regarding the ADR options that the clients have, including mediation, and to each and to and hand it to each of the parties at their first hearing with the court. And secondly, to obtain the signatures from each of the parties to verify that, in fact, um, that they, they have done so. So I appreciate members' support of this really important bill. I'm hopeful that it's going to benefit families and reduce the burden on our courts. So I would encourage a green vote. Thank you. There are no amendments at the desk. The, bill, the clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House File number 3308. Members, discussion to House File 3308. Any discussion to House File 3308? Hearing none and seeing none, the clerk will take the roll. <clears throat> Members, please vote. The clerk will close the roll. There being 127 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar is House File 3482. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 3482, number four on the calendar for the day, an act relating to criminal justice, the first engrossment. I call on the bill author, the member from Sherburn, Representative Zerwas, to explain the bill. Mr. Speaker and members, House file 3482 deals with statute of limitations for identity theft convictions. So currently, in a host of white collar crimes, there are set in statute of limitations five years. However, identity theft does not include a five-year statute of limitations. It, it has a three-year statute of limitations. In committee, we heard some very compelling testimony from a family that after years of their elderly parents falling victim to an identi identity theft scam, found out only after their house was being foreclosed upon that the theft had actually been occurring for years. And because of that delay, they were unable to be charged under the felony identity theft statute. So this change uh, that was brought to us by the Hennepin County Attorney's Office would increase the statute of limitations from three years to five years. I call on the member from Hennepin, Hennepin from Hennepin, Representative Hillstrom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, if Representative Zeros would yield to a question. He will yield. Representative Hillstrom. Thank you. Uh, Representative Zeros, it's my understanding that this got a late fiscal note. Can you tell me how you address the fiscal cost? The member from Sherburn, Representative Zeros. Mr. Speaker and members, it did get a late uh, fiscal note, which, co which uh, caused us uh, to recall this from the floor and bring it back in front of Ways and Means. Uh, we heard it in Ways and Means and then uh, pass it out of ways and means back uh, to the floor today. The member from Hennepin, Representative Hillstrom. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, members, given that Representative Zerwas has addressed the uh, fiscal cost in this bill, I uh, strongly support this. Uh, members, as folks are become victims of identity theft or when there are large amounts of money that are taken, um, it's sometimes very difficult to actually uncover this. And so sometimes large quantities of money are taken. Um, and if you don't know that someone has actually taken over your identity and taken out debt in your name, sometimes it takes it a little longer to find it. Um, it makes it consistent with other statute of limitations when you have over $35,000 worth of theft, um, and I would encourage members to support it. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third mm -hmm. reading. Third reading, House File number 3482. Additional discussion to House File 3482. Discussion to House File 3482. Seeing none and hearing none, the clerk will take the roll. Members, please vote. The clerk will close the roll. There being 127 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and is title agreed to. <clears throat> the next bill on the calendar for today is Senate File 2227. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> Senate File number 2227, number six on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety, the first engrossment. I call on the, bill, the bill's author, the member from Blue Earth, Repres uh, Representative Cornish to explain the bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, uh, 12 years ago we passed a bill uh, making it a felony to transfer bodily fluids onto a peace officer. Uh, everything was going along fine until last year um, there was a Supreme Court decision saying that a physical assault had to take place at the same time as uh, the introduction of the body fluids or the transfer of the body fluids uh, onto the officer. And so this is clarification language. It does not increase or enhance the penalty. It does not redefine bodily fluids. The only thing that this bill does is uh, clarify the language to make it possible to charge the person like the bill was originally intended, I found out from the law enforcement that sponsored it, that a transfer of bodily fluids onto the officer would result in a felony. So this fixes that and uh, makes it a separate offense um, or could be combined together with an assault, but it doesn't have to depend on the assault. This went through the Senate uh, unanimous on the Senate floor. It's 12 years old. We're just clarifying it, and it includes judges, security personnel, bailiff, correctional guards, uh, the whole gamut. And I'd uh, stand for any questions or sit for any questions if you wish. There is an amendment at the desk. I call on the member from Ramsey. The clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> Lesh moves to amend Senate file number 2227, the first engrossment, and the amendment is coded A1. I call on the member from Ramsey, Representative Lesh, to explain the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this amendment, uh, the A1 amendment, bans shock cuffs in the state of Minnesota. And shock cuffs, or stun cuffs, as they're commonly called also, if you don't know what they are, um, you're familiar with the taser, right, where you either shock someone in the side by hand, or you can shoot them with the probes, and it hits them, and it shocks them, and they fall down. Um, it's uh, a non-lethal form. Um, to control a suspect or a prisoner. But the shock cuffs um, are that, that taser is incorporated into the handcuffs themselves. Um, but it's not just like any other uh, taser. Uh, because aside from the fact that you 
uh, don't need to actually take a, an affirmative action to take out the taser and shoot someone or take out the stun gun and stun someone. Um, now you've already got it on them. So simply with the press of a button, uh, you can actually uh, cause them to fall onto the floor and go into convulsions. Now this is not simply like another taser, but it's, a, it's actually three times as powerful as your standard taser. Um, uh, it can be, uh, it caused permanent scars, blisters, um, and heart problems and seizures. Court cases in other states have heard arguments that the first, fourth, fifth, eighth, and 15th amendments uh, have been implicated by their use. They can be activated from 100 feet away uh, and unlike taser guns also, they can deliver repeated shocks. Uh, courts and uh, the police officers and sheriffs can already use hand and ankle cuffs, restraining chairs, uh, spit hoods, and gags for unruly people. The reason I, I brought this amendment um, is because the use of these things called shock cuffs uh, just seems a little unseemly. I could probably be persuaded that in some instances um, they may be appropriate, but uh, in the, uh, another example of where technology being used by government is leapfrogging our ability to consider how appropriate it is, uh, looking at the use of shock cuffs in Minnesota, maybe think a little bit about that situation in Abu Ghraib of a guy standing on a milk crate with a hood over his head and electrodes on his fingertips. Um, and they had him just stand there, and he didn't know when he was going to be shocked or not. Um, and it was psychological torture, is what it was called by international courts. Now, it may be that, that, that the shock cubs are not being used that way in the state of Minnesota, but I think it's appropriate for a discussion. Because whether or not the use of shock cubs rises to the occasion where it, it is called torture, um, which I'm not, I'm not certain that in all instances it would be, also keep in mind that there are still plenty of people who look at what happened in Abu Ghraib or Guantanamo and said, well, that was perfectly fine because we were fighting terrorists and any information would justify any action that we would take against those terrorists. And I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, the U.S. Army ultimately ended up not agreeing with that. The U.S. government ended up not agreeing with that. And so I think we should really have uh, the discussion about this to make that determination, which is why I I offered the amendment. So I would stand for questions, uh, Mr. Speaker. Members, question on the A1 amendment by Representative Lash. Discussion. The member from Isanti, Representative Johnson. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, I have a lot of concern about this, amend this amendment. I understand what Representative Lesh is talking about, but that does not happen in our law enforcement community. In fact, these electronic stunning devices, besides just the cuffs, they, there's also a belt that they have. They're used regularly in our courts. We've all received the emails about requesting more court security. This is one of the devices that is used for court security. The judges have rule, pretty much ruled that when a defendant is in the courtroom during his trial, they cannot be handcuffed or shackled. They're during their court case, but generally they're wearing street clothes. They don't want to prejudice the jury. And if we remove these devices for some very serious and dangerous people, they're going to have to be shackled or in the restraint chairs and again prejudice, prejudice during the, the jury. So this, uh, this amendment actually makes sort court security less secure. I would ask that you not support this amendment, as this is something that needs a lot more discussion than we can do just on the floor. The member from Ramsey, Representative Lesh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, members, you know, I understand also where uh, Representative Johnson is coming from. Uh, but I would ask you to think about this. Where is your line? Because when you come in here and you represent 40,000 people, you got to decide where you draw your own line. And it may be that the use of shock cuffs or shock belts doesn't cross that line. 
but I, I think we all really genuinely need to think about that, about where that line is for us. I'm not going to lie, just the thought of the use of these things um, comes pretty close to my line. Um, it may or may not cross it, depending on the situation. Um, but I think, considering the fact that it's not just shot cuffs, but more technology is going to be coming on the pike that we have to think about critically and take into consideration. Because using the logic that it keeps the courtroom safer, um, you can do anything. I mean, anything is acceptable. Any kind of restraint, any kind of even torture is acceptable. And of course, I think when you use the word torture, most people think that that's not acceptable. So I encourage you to think where your line is of what is appropriate um, in the restraint of prisoners. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I would withdraw the amendment. Lesh withdraws the A1 amendment. There are no other amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, Senate file number 2227. Members, discussion to Senate file 2227. Discussion to Senate file 2227. Hearing none and seeing none, the clerk will take the roll. You're welcome. <laughs> Members, please vote. <laughs> Members, please vote. All those members wishing to have voted have voted. The clerk will close the roll. There being 119 ayes and 20 nays, the bill is passed and its title, excuse me, 119 ayes and 9 nays. The bill is passed and its title agreed to. <clears throat> Reports from Standing Committees and Divisions. Pepin from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Wednesday, May 5, 2016, and establishes a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills. House File Number 71, 2683, 2833, 2954, 3167, 3423, and 3944, and Senate File Number 3084. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there is no objections, we will take these motions first. Hearing none and seeing none, all those in favor, the motion prevails. Announcements. Announcements. I call on the member from Hennepin, the Majority Leader, Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 9 a.m. Wednesday, November, excuse me, Wednesday, May 4th, 2016. Representative Pepin moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 9 a.m. on Wednesday, May 4th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, the motion prevails. Representative Pepin. I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Pepin moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, aye. the House is adjourned until 9 a.m. on Wednesday, May 4th. <laughs>